Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. My name is Matt, also known as the king of armor destruction. But first, did you work out today? Did you get some bench press, deadlifts, squats, thrusters, pull-ups, bar muscle-ups? Get out there and move, folks. Got to stay healthy. Anyways, we've got a new player, RTS Tactical. This is a single curve, a level four plate. It weighs approximately six pounds, 3.8 ounces. We've got the Linex coating on here. Level four, for those of you that don't know, is only required to stop one round of M2 armor piercing. It's a 163 grain steel core projectile, originally in 30-06, going 2880 feet per second, plus or minus 50. We'll put the RF3 standard cut out somewhere on here, which is the upcoming NIJ07 standard, pretty much unchanged for level four. On my channel, we like to stick to NIJ standards as best as we can for our backyard tests. I have a clay briefcase that you can see right here. I can't keep it to temperature, but it's a good compressible media. We stick at 45 feet unless we're doing another type of testing, but for this, we're gonna stick at 45 feet. I like to use 300 wind mag for our testing because I can get to the NIJ specification. You'll find with a lot of 30 at six M2 AP surplus that you won't get 2880 feet per second. You can get anywhere from 25 to maybe 2700 depending on how that ammunition was stored. Since this is a ceramic strike face per the NIJ, we've gone ahead and dropped it on its face twice with our test rig. I'll put a picture in picture somewhere so you guys can see that. It's approximately 50 to 55 degrees and windy outside, so hopefully it doesn't pick up on the mic too bad. We have our Pro Chrono Digital as always. Give us a moment to reorganize everything and we'll get into today's test. Our first two loads here will be M2AP. We'll take two shots and then go look what we did. If I forgot to mention in the opening intro of this video, this is a tile array plate has the slightly reduced ceramic strike face, but not as much as others. So eventually when we shoot it enough to take it apart, we can see how much reduced it is. So we'll stay away from the edge, try to maintain at least two inches in from the edge like the NIJ calls for. We're using a TC Compass 300 wind mag with a 22 inch barrel, have the Yankee Hill Phantom M2 suppressor on there. Since safety is a number one priority here, we took some extra ballistic steel and made some little shields here so that if we get any uh, ricochet or anything that comes back at us, hopefully that will stop it. Shouldn't be much of a concern for ceramic armor and polyethylene since it encapsulates a lot of the shrapnel, but when we're testing steel core stuff, you never know. We'll go for the upper left of the plate like we like to start on most of our tests. Velocity, 29, 23. I forgot to turn the screen on for you guys. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. I got the screen on now. I should have looked and realized that I didn't have it on. <laughs> Velocity 31, 52. A little short there. Let's go see what we did. Here was our standard pressure M2 AP shot. Here was our plus P plus. You can tell that that plate is made from the alumina. It's the white ceramic there. And as mentioned, yes, there is reduced strike face. It's about a half inch of foam there. Not too bad. We've seen more from others. Let's see what we did. This is an import plate, but RTS Tactical has told me that they want to produce their own state side. Hey! No pass-through. Impressive. Now, we did get a little more back face on the plus P plus loading, but we've seen worse from some other plates, so they must be using probably a higher quality polyethylene on there. Not too bad. Now, this clay is colder than normal, so you're going to see less back face on here. I'm just using it as a compressible media. Now, we'll go to another AP threat. This is M993 AP 762 NATO. This is the military's current armor piercing round in 762 NATO that I'm aware of. They probably have some newer technology that they may be fielding, but this is what I got my hands on. It's a 130 grain tungsten core projectile. I'll put a picture in picture so you can see what that core looks like. 
We're using our 22-inch TC Compass. I have one in 308. We've got the Yankee Hill suppressor on there. We'll take this shot on the left below the original M2AP load. We should see slightly over 3,000 feet per second. I see I didn't turn on the monitor. There we go. Velocity 29.76. I don't know why I read those. Here was our shot right here. We were close to that edge, but we should be on the ceramic there. We're really far away from this previous shot. So that should be a fair hit. If it looks like we're on the edge there. We may take another shot. What do you guys think? Rut row raggy. Poked a hole right through that sucker. We're on ceramic there. I'll peel the cover off to make sure. But most of the level fours, at whatever thickness ceramic they're using, it's hard to stop M993 from that 22 inch barrel. We've done it from the 16 inch with our our budget level four plates. I see there's some strike face foam protected on there. That's a good thing. That M993 is no joke, folks. All right, back to our 300 Win Mag. We've got souped up M80A1, normally going around 3,000 feet per second in the 308. We should see almost 3,500 feet per second in this guy. We're gonna go for the right side of the plate this time. Make sure I'm inside the chronograph here. <laughs> Look at that velocity. Oh yeah, brother. starting to get dark on me. I probably should have started this test earlier, but I think most of the data should still be good. Here was our shot right here. What do you all think? It's pretty fast for a projectile. I've seen faster, but it is a little cold outside today. Hey! No pass through. There's a good sized dimple on there, but what I'm noticing on the RTS plate is we're not seeing a lot of that huge back face on this plate. So that's a good thing. I wonder if they're using a higher quality polyethylene or potentially more layers. Well, folks, we're in the fortress of solitude for the closing portion of this test, AKA my basement. But I wanna apologize about the light quality of the testing video. I didn't realize it was getting that dark outside. So hopefully you can see all of the video okay. I'll try to do some post-production to lighten it but our data is still there and that's why we always include the spreadsheet in the closing now of our test results so there's a good clear cut dry answer of what the results were there's some things that i like about this rts level 4 plate i like the linex coating that they're using on the outside that is you know basically waterproof chemical proof keeps things out of the plate that don't need to be in there I like that they're using a high density foam strike face protectant here. This is black foam here. Hopefully the dog steps in the background aren't too annoying. They're apparently down here checking out what I'm doing. My littlest dog is afraid of our new wash machine for some reason. We have some Kevlar material on the back here that they looks like they use for that foam. You can see our alumina here. I'm not sure if the color of this alumina is an indication of the different quality levels that are available for ceramic, but this is more white than what we've seen with some of the other ceramic tile plates. Some of theirs is a little more dull white yellow. This is more of that pure white, but still, still a little bit off yellow depending on what kind of camera you're looking at. You can see our tile array here in the second camera. As I mentioned, this is a reduced strike face plate you can see the foam ring here about three quarters of an inch on each side and the top and bottom 
I do believe Mr. Guns and Gear incorrectly stated that this was a full strike face, and as you can see, it is not. You can see the hits on this plate are very localized in terms of the ceramic, but even then with these tiles, you can see some crack propagation in a lot of these, and that's why I stopped the test. I did the standard torque test on the plate, and I could hear that it was shifting about. So in order to maintain some fairness, I decided to call the test at that and come back home and see what damage is laid inside. Below our ceramic, of course, is our backer, which is ultra high molecular weight polyethylene. Again, there are different levels of quality of that. One thing I did note about this plate, even though it was getting colder and the clay under represents back face when it gets colder, the localized back face on our plate, I'm going to make a mess out of my table, on the back side of this isn't too bad. Even from our plus P plus M2 AP load, it wasn't until we got to the M80A1 going 3,300 feet per second that we got a decent bulge, but I mean, I've seen some larger bulges from some of the other budget plates using M80 ball. Our M993 shows us that that round is no joke. I would love to get my hands on some of the other newer advanced technology AP rounds in 30 cal. I know Lehigh Defense makes them, but unfortunately I don't have a level 10 FFL. So pretty much when you email them and ask about stuff like that, they instantly dump your stuff in the trash. As we prepare to shut down, restart, and send you on your way for updates, I always like to take a moment to thank everyone who helps make these videos possible. The number one person we probably should thank is my wife, because she's the one that lets me do this and helps me out from time to time, my Patreon supporters, and of course RTS Tactical who sent this plate. In full disclosure and transparency, I contacted them, and after a few email exchanges, they agreed to send me one of these plates to torture, because you all asked me how one of these plates would perform, and you've come to trust the king of armor destruction never to lead you afoul on how a plate is going to stack up against the biggest and baddest of threats. So until next time, folks, make sure you're exercising and eating right and getting plenty of that protein to grow those muscles. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range.